Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Focus Vandalia. My name is Rich Hopkins. I'm the communications manager for the city. And on today's program, we're going to take you inside a special presentation put on by the Division of Police that could help you safeguard your identity and your credit cards. We're also going to check in with our fire chief, Chad Follick, tell you why a Montgomery County tornado warning did not necessitate the severe weather siren sounding here in Vandalia. But our first stop today is here at the former Morton Middle School site. As you can see right now, it's an empty field. But if efforts by our city manager's office prove fruitful, this field could be developed sometime in the very near future. The former Morton Middle School site has been an empty field for a few years now, but efforts to develop it have been ongoing. Assistant City Manager Greg Shackelford says a local law firm was very close to buying the lot, but just last month chose another Vandalia location to locate. So with that news, we went back out and started uh, trying to get in touch with some of the leads that we had on some prior uh, deals or deal opportunities. And we have an interested developer uh, right now that has a phys physician's group that uh, that's interested in buying uh, that would probably look to buy the entire lot. Shackelford says the lot has some positives for a company looking for exposure. It's about 10 acres and uh, for a 10 acre lot there's not a lot of frontage so that's that's a little bit of a, of a challenge but we're hoping that the way that they would structure this deal um, we would probably be looking to our second meeting in April to talk with council in an executive session and kind of see where, make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. Just down the road away is Stone Quarry Crossings, where superior abrasives are inching closer to a big grand opening. They're probably looking to open in May, uh, May, June. Um, but the, the, they have the asphalt down on the parking area. The, a lot of the exterior is done for the manufacturing area. Uh, they, they're working on right now, they got all the glass in the front of the building and it's, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, the, the front of the building has got a framing like an S for Superior. Um, and uh, what that means to Vandalia is we'll have a turnkey situation with 85 employees coming over from Harrison Township right away. Shackelford says the move-in is a little tricky as company officials balance the need to relocate with the need to keep customers supplied. We'll probably have to do a uh, plant shutdown for maybe a week or two, uh, which is a challenge for them because they, they have the construction project that they're working through already but then they have the timing of the, the business continuation of trying to keep the business running as long as they possibly can to keep their clients uh, satisfied. And then uh, they have to re-rig uh, the equipment into the new Vandalia location. There's also potential good news from the Northwoods Business Park in the city's northeast corner. The good news about that is uh, we had a lot of information that we put together for um, that, that, that park is going through a site certification right now. Um, at least we're going to get some strong feedback on what some of the weaknesses are there, but, uh, but obviously it would be uh, uh, important to us, especially as we continue to, to sell the land at Stone Quarry. Uh, that will be probably our number one targeted site. There's over 300 acres there that are available to develop. Most projects we look at are somewhere between maybe five to 50 acres uh, of land of interest. So that's a, that's a significantly larger amount of available property than we have at Stone Quarry. Shackelford says with any luck, the Northwoods Business Park will begin to see a storm of activity. A storm of a different sort had folks asking questions this past month. Despite a tornado warning for Montgomery County, the severe weather sirens in Vandalia were not activated. We asked Fire Chief Chad Follick to explain. Our policy in the city of Vandalia and a lot of the policies around the cities around us is that uh, we will only set the uh, sirens off when the, you know, when the danger is imminent to Vandalia. And people say, well, how do you know that? Uh, the National Weather Service issues those storm warnings. They're the foremost experts in those storm warnings. So that's how we, have to, that's how we get our information. If they lay down the polygon, uh, the, the storm polygon on the radar, and it, put, it puts Van Day in the path of that storm. Uh, then that will, they will notify us via the weather radios that we have in dispatch, uh, also via our, um, our uh, phone call system that we have here, and we will make the sirens go off from that point. Follick says it's a good idea to check local media and weather radios if the weather looks threatening, and that the sirens in Vandalia are not designed to alert people in their homes. The sirens are an outdoor warning system. 
You know, you should not be depending on the sirens to tell you when to go in or when to put your kids inside or when to get your pets inside or any of that information. They're an outdoor warning system. We, we place them in outdoor venues around the city that are highly populated, especially during these periods where the weather is really nice. So you should depend on either drop, drop uh, messages to your phone from one of their news stations, meteorologists, or the National Weather Service, or storm radios, which we were several years ago, handed out about 250 of them, so we know they're out there. So those storm radios, those, that information comes directly from the National Weather Service, and that's the, that's the foremost experts in those storms. There were experts of a different sort in Vandalia in late March, showing folks how to avoid getting ripped off by credit card skimmers. We have Joe Harris from Montgomery County Auditor's Office. He's the chief inspector. Um, he sees these on a daily basis and does inspections as well as um, he's doing a statewide um, going out doing informational sessions. And you have Natalie Dunlevy from National Processing Solutions. Um, that's her company. She handles this as well. She's the expert too. And she's going along with Joe and they're, they're working it together to combat this throughout the state of Ohio. Crime Prevention Officer Doug Nagel says the free seminar is needed to combat a very disturbing trend in identity theft using skimmers to steal your account information. The skimmers are, are quite prevalent, not necessarily in our region, but like I said, as a nation as a whole, um, you'll see them on your gas pumps. Now they're showing up, uh, you know, inside the inside the gas stores, um, stuff like that. So it's just the, even ATMs, they're hitting ATMs as well. So it's just making those subtle notices that you'll see every time you go to that might appear that can prevent. A full house was on hand at the Justice Center to hear the experts advice. And it's just teaching you on how to, um, you know, prevent getting your credit card information stolen, getting your personal information stolen, and then that being used against you to make fake, fake credit cards, to use your fake information to purchase items such as gift cards. Um, and it's, it's a national trend right now that everybody's trying to combat. As the skimmer trend shows no sign of slowing down, Nagel says there are some simple things you need to look for when using your credit card out at a local business. The first tip you're going to look for is uh, if you're on the outside at a gas pump, you're going to look for a tamper-proof seal. Um, you're going to look at that, make sure maybe it has the business name, the auditor's name, anything that would come back to the company or like the county or something like that. You're going to look for that, make sure it's not broken, make sure it's intact, it doesn't say void. Uh, the second is if you go to the ATM, if you go to the gas pump as well, look at the, how the credit card machine actually works, um, how thick it is, kind of maybe give it a gentle little shake, see if it moves, those should not move, see if it moves, as well as the keypad, they're even installing stuff, the keypad so they can get your zip code, even give that a little shake, make sure it's not loose. None of that, when it's properly installed, is ever loose. There will be more of these seminars later this year, so if you're interested in attending the next one, keep an eye peeled. We had great response. I mean, as you would watch people walk in the beginning, had no idea what they were really coming to. Kind of had a general idea. Then you, you hear the numerous questions when we're 5, 10, 15 minutes in, just questions popping up. And then they come out with a better realization of how it is and how individually they can help um, prevent this crime from happening just by making those subtle notices to the ATM, to the gas pump, even if you're inside, just, just noticing different stuff. Drivers in Vandalia will be noticing a difference in some of the roadways in and around town this spring as an ambitious resurfacing project gets underway. Public Service Director Rob Cron says the first step in resurfacing is repairing the curbs and drive approaches that abut the roadway. We go through and inspect all of the utility structures prior to our resurfacing projects and we come through and make any repairs to it before our concrete crews actually come in and, and do the curb and sidewalk repairs. And then later on this summer, you'll see the resurfacing crews in here as well. Crews are getting an early start because of the sheer volume of roadways slated for repair this year. Actually, this year we've got scheduled to do 18 different sections of street plus a couple alleys in this year's program. Um, one of the streets is on Brown School Road here where you see the guys working behind me. There's a little more than resurfacing, meanwhile, taking place on West Hafer Road as a water main is being installed. Something we're going to see going on here real, real soon here in the city is a water main replacement on West Hafer Road between Brown School Road and Foley Drive. Um, we're going to replace the old um, six-inch cast iron main in there with a new ductile iron pipe. 
One last note on our roadways, an announcement that means additional funding for planned work on a very busy stretch of roadway. Some other good news we received here recently was a project that's going to happen. It's out a couple years, but we see word um, we're going to be receiving some federal dollars to help pay for the resurfacing of our section of the airport access road. Um, you're going to see that project probably take place in early 2018. Kron says the airport access road has been patched in the past, but there's not been major work done on it for more than 30 years. That road um, was, was constructed in the early 1980s and has never had a complete asphalt overlay on it since then. So it's, it's well overdue and we're fortunate to receive some of the funding to pay for the majority of the work. Our last stop today is at the Vandalia Recreation Center, where organizers are gearing up for this summer's big corporate challenge. It's for Vandalia businesses who are looking for something for their employees to get together in a different environment outside of the work hours uh, and participate in a handful of uh, kind of competitive and non-competitive events. We've got events ranging from a home run derby in softball to basketball challenges to soccer challenges to cornhole and euchre. Uh, we run the gamut of activities to do June 5th through the 10th. Parks and Rec Superintendent Jeff Kreil is the contact person for the Corporate Challenge. He says it's an event that pays big dividends to companies. It is a great team building event. It's great to see your buddies that you work with outside of the work environment where they can relax, have some fun, uh, and do a lot of fun, different events. Kraus says one of the best things about the Corporate Challenge might be its very affordable price tag. For a business to participate, it's $250. Uh, that $250 will get you 20 t-shirts uh, that they'll pass out to participating members. Uh, it'll get you the, the five days uh, of organized events uh, we end, we conclude the corporate challenge with a, um, uh, a, a picnic on Friday night. So you get a dinner and uh, awards are given out to event winners and overall winners. Uh, so for $250, it's a great investment for businesses to employ for their employees. If this sounds like something you might want your business to be involved in, there's an upcoming meeting you'll want to attend. We are having a, a corporate challenge social kickoff on April 15th at the Vandalia Rec Center starting at noon. Uh, at that meeting, we'll have a light pizza lunch and some drinks, and we'll just share all the different things that we're going to be offering this year. So it's a great time to come, hear a little bit about it, uh, make a decision if you want to participate, and then we'll go from there. Talking about the summer, if you're looking for a safe and supervised place for your children to hang out, Camp Rec might be for you. Camp Rec will begin May 31st through August 12th. Um, we offer daily and weekly registration rates. Um, it's a day full of fun packed from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays we go to Castle Hill Swimming Pool. Wednesday is a different field trip each week. Um, swimming, climbing the wall, outside, keep them busy all day long. Recreation Supervisor Brittany Oliver says the camp is perfect for parents of younger kids they'd rather not have sitting home alone and unsupervised. For the working parents, so that's why we're open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, you can drop them off and pick them up anytime that you would like, um, but we do offer those long hours for the working parents. Registration for Camp Rec begins on April the 20th, which is also the first day you can register for a very popular fall sport. We're starting baseball season, but actually thinking about our next sport um, that we offer, and that would be fall soccer. And uh, we're talking about that them in April because registration begins April 20th for uh, fall soccer. We offer a program for three-year-olds up to 17-year-olds, uh, boys and girls. Uh, great facility here at the sports complex that we use to play our games. Uh, great program for the kids. Uh, so sign up early if you do, um, if you can online, uh, save $10 by registering online or uh, stop in to the front desk of the rec center and register. Recreation Supervisor Alicia McCracken says the soccer program is one of the most popular programs offered through Parks and Recreation, as evidenced on any given Soccer Saturday. If you're interested in any of the programs you saw today, be it the soccer, be it the camp rec, there's a couple of options you have to get signed up. One, you can stop right here at the front desk of the rec center and they'll get you squared away. You can also check it all out online. 
VandaliaRecCenter.com. That's going to do it for this edition of Focus Vandalia. I'm Rich Hopkins. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.